Hi, I'm Chad. I write docs here at Customer.io. And today I'm going to show you how to connect your website to Customer.io using our JavaScript source integration. Now, if you're new to Customer.io or you're not a developer, this might sound a little daunting, but I promise it's really easy. As you set up this integration with Customer.io, we'll provide you with some code. You just copy that into your website and then you're mostly ready to go. Uh, so by the end of this video, you'll be able to identify the people who visit your website, track the events they perform, and even send them in-app messages. Uh, so let's let's get started. So as you can see, I'm starting with a fresh workspace. That's just so that it's easy to demonstrate this integration and show data as it comes into the system. Obviously, this works with a fully populated workspace. You do not need to go create a new workspace for this. Uh, to set up the JavaScript source to get started, we will go to Data Pipelines, go to Sources, click Add Source, select JavaScript, which is in the Website category, and click Connect JavaScript. Now we're going to copy this code right here into the head tag of our website. I am going to use our documentation website because that's where I'm comfortable doing my work. So I do want to draw attention to a couple of things here. Uh, first is the analytics load statement. Um, this just contains the key that we use to authenticate with Customer.io. This is what tells Customer.io, yes, I want to send data into Customer.io. It's what authorizes you to do that. Um, but we're going to come back to this a little later when we set up in-app messaging. And then the analytics page call. So this, uh, whenever we load this JavaScript snippet, so on basically every page of your website, we are going to track a page call. And this tells Customer.io what pages your, uh, your website visitors go to. Um, and it's also how we determine where to send an in-app message. So if you target in-app messages to a specific part of your website, this page call tells us what page a person's on so we don't inadvertently send a message to the wrong page. Um, but we will, we'll, we'll get to more on those in just a moment. Um, so I've set this up. I'm going to save and I'm going to refresh our documentation website and click Test Connection. Hey, we've got some events coming in. So now we're almost done. I'm going to click Complete Setup, but there's one more thing that we need to do. So we're going to go to Edit Source, and you'll see I've got my JavaScript source connected to Customer.io, but I've got a dotted line over here. And what that means is that data is coming into Customer.io, but we aren't doing anything with it. That's what we do when we add a destination. So we need to add a destination, and we're going to select our Journeys workspace. And again, this tells Customer.io that we not only want to send data into Customer.io, but we also want to store and use it in Customer.io. So in almost every case, uh, whether you set up a JavaScript source, one of our mobile sources, or you use any other integration with Customer.io, you're probably going to want to set up or, or select your, your Journeys workspace as a destination. But you could also have other destinations here. So for example, if I had an analytics platform like Mixpanel or Amplitude, and I wanted to check the effectiveness of my website, I could also send data there. Um, but for now, all I've got is my Journeys workspace, and I'm going to connect that, and there we go. But uh, so now I'm done, I can, I can track page views, but I'm not identifying anybody yet. You'll see if I go to the people page, I'm not tracking anybody. So even if I refresh this page, nothing's happening over here. Um, I don't have any people yet. So to do that, I need to add an identify call. So I've cheated a little bit, um, so you don't have to watch me type. Uh, but if you're not a JavaScript developer, all that's happening here is we're saying that we want to identify a person with this email address, and we want to set these attributes. So we're going to say that a person known with this email address, cool.person at example.com, has a first name, last name, and favorite food. So I'm going to enter that. And when I go back, hey, there we go. My person showed up. Um, so if I go here, we'll see that we've identified a person, we're tracking the page that they viewed, uh, they've got a favorite food, first name, last name, all that good stuff. So we've identified a person. Now, I've done this in kind of an awkward way. Um, obviously, you don't expect your customers to open the console and identify themselves. So what you'll do with this kind of call is attach it to uh, like a form on your website. So some, say somewhere where somebody uh, provides their email address and says that they want to subscribe to your newsletter, or they're interested in a product that's out of stock or something like that, and they provide their email address. Then you would wire up an identify call to identify that person, and then there you go. Now, when you identify somebody, we will store that data 
as a cookie and in a customer's local, like one of your, your website visitors um, will store it as a cookie and in their local storage. So when they visit your website again, you don't have to, they don't necessarily have to fill out a form every time. You'll still know who that person is um, when they visit subsequent pages. Um, on our website, uh, we already have that wired up. So I'm just going to hit that right there. Um, and there we go. So now I am ready to identify people. I could identify another person and we'll see them come through. But for now, let's focus on in-app messaging. So to get ready for in-app messaging, there are just a couple of other things that I need to do. So remember that analytics.load statement? Here, I need to copy in a couple of lines of code to uh, add support for in-app messaging. So when we look at our head tag, I'm gonna go into this analytics load statement, add comma and integrations. Um, and I missed, there we go. Um, so what's happening here is we are saying that we want to load our in-app plugin inside our JavaScript snippet, but we have a site ID here that says your site ID. Well, that's obviously not right. Let's go get our site ID. So to get that, I'm going to go um, in journeys to data and integrations, integrations, and the customer IO API. I'm gonna copy this value out right here, and I'm going to set that up. Now, what this is saying is that uh, I want to send in-app messages from this instance of journeys. Uh, this is where my messages come from. And it makes sure that if you have multiple workspaces, um, say for example, you have, different customers with different workspaces or different aspects of your business that you don't send overlapping in-app messages. Um, this just says that I want to send in-app messages from this workspace into this snippet. So there we go. Now I'm ready to send in-app messages. So let's, let's go ahead and do that. So I've got a campaign mostly set up to do that, but I wanna show you what's going on here. Um, I'm sending it to a very simple segment that just checks for people with a valid email address. The person that we've added so far, cool.person at example.com, belongs to that segment. Um, in our workflow, we've added a single in-app message. And that in-app message is just customized with the person's first name and last name. So we're ready to go there. So we're going to start our campaign. Um, going to send it to the one person in our workspace so far and click Start Campaign. Now, if I go back to our campaign overview, uh, we will see that we sent a message to cool person. Um, and there we go. The message has already shown up. There we go. So what if I want to identify another person and demonstrate this feature? Let's go with another person. And maybe their favorite food is burgers. Okay. So I'm going to identify that person, refresh the page. Now it can take up to 10 seconds to send an in-app message. And actually the first time that you send an in-app message, it can take up to a few minutes as we, as we warm up in-app messaging. But there you go. As you can see, we've already got another in-app message showing in the workspace. We can dismiss it by clicking continue. And there we go. So that's all it takes. Um, now we've, we've set up in-app messages, added people, and we've done it all through our JavaScript source integration with our website. Um, so that's about all it takes. You copy a little bit of code into your website, and then you can identify people, track the pages that they visit, and send them in-app messages. Thanks, everybody.